So one important thing you need to learn about when you're talking dealing with this timeline stuff is understanding the difference between managing stuff on the layer and managing stuff on the group. And so we've got this example here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here on the timeline. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more room there. And so here we've got this, this group that contains, the group is called Numbers, and it contains these three clips. So first of all, you know, just to do something I showed briefly earlier, but just to reiterate it, if you click on the group track, you automatically select the clip within the group that's lined up with that particular area. So if I click on this area where all that's there is the number three, I, I am selecting the, the clip number three. If I click on this area that's, that's where it only is showing the number one, I, it's exactly the same is selecting the clip number one. And that doesn't matter whether it's collapsed or expanded. So if it's collapsed, I can still manipulate clip number one and I can even, I can even trim this edge of it. See, I, I'm trimming the beginning of that clip number one. Now when I expand it, you'll see clip number one has been moved in that way. So even when it's a collapse, you can control whether you're selecting an individual clip or if I select in the middle area where it's the overlap, now I'm selecting all three of those items. And again, if I expand it, you'll see all three items are selected. So you can manipulate those as well. I can move them or trim them or whatever. Whatever I want to do. Additionally, you can actually manipulate the top area here separately from the clips themselves. Now, if by default I just grab that edge, it just does the same thing. I'm essentially moving the, the clip underneath it. But if it's lined up with more than one object and I move the top there, now I'm moving both of those at the same time. Because essentially you're saying, make my group shorter and anything that's exceeding the boundary of that, shorten that up as well. And this gets to an important distinction. The, when you play something back, it's only visible as long as the group is visible. So you can actually shorten the group without shortening the contents. And you do that by pressing the command key and dragging the group layer. And now, basically, I'm, it's as if this area of the group, the beginning area of the group there, is hidden. And this is a really helpful way to do stuff if you want to build something and then you know, get it out of the way temporarily so you're not being distracted by it or you know you're not going to be using it for a part of a project. You can just trim up the group header. And now the group itself begins at this point and ends at that point. And you can you know, do the same with the end, of course, just command click the edge there. And we're limiting the group to that area. Now, I can still make changes to these other clips, but that part of the clip, even though you can see it in the timeline, you cannot see it up here in the canvas because that area is not visible in the group. As soon as I make the group long enough to include that area, now you can see that. And here you see I can have the group longer than my actual clip, which enables me to make changes or make you know manipulations to the clips within that group, you know, and leading up to and exceeding to that edge point. So this is the general idea of working with groups. And again, the kind of the whole point of this is so that you can do it when they're collapsed. Because when they're collapsed, this is how you can manipulate uh, more objects at once. You can see more than one thing in the timeline here because we've got these things collapsed into their group components. And it allows you to work a little bit more effectively.